G'day, I'm Ash. This is patch 1.101. We're finally in the double digits, triple digits for patch numbers. However, I was disappointed that it wasn't 2.0. However, War Thunder 2.0 might be coming later down the line, so expect a greater patch for that. Who knows what we might get in the future. Regardless, today we're going to be focusing on the P51C10. And while I do have access to the P47D22RE, which is a Razorback, Primarily today's focus will be on the P51C. Now, initially I did actually do my first ever video on a Mustang, particularly a Razorback on the British version. This is the Mark 1A, rank 1, uh, sorry, rank 3, battle rating 3.7. And while it is fantastic, uh, a few years down the line we managed to get and pick up this. The P51, rank 2, battle rating 3.7. Now, this had 20mm Hispanos, and the Americans didn't really like cannons, aside from on their naval fighters, their naval ground attackers, and a select few of their heavy fighters. So it always bugged me why this wasn't premium, whereas the British had to pay for their, uh, their, their cannons on their Mustang. Regardless, that has changed. This is basically what we should have had all along. People have been requesting this vehicle for so long, I reckon it's probably been the most anticipated vehicle for a long while. And myself included here, 12.7 M2 Browning machine guns with 1,200 rounds. Rank 3, 4.0, 708 kilometers per hour in a straight line speed. Modifications wise, it doesn't necessarily matter. I've nearly upgraded this thing. I've had like three to four matches in it. But still, it's not quite the same. This is the P51 Alpha. It's a Thunder League vehicle, and it's basically identical, aside from the fact that this gets 60 more rounds of machine gun, and is about 10 to 15 kilometers slower, but performs exactly the same way because it still has four guns. Interesting, is it not? Probably. Regardless, today we'll be taking a look at some gameplay in this particular vehicle. So I hope you enjoy, you sit back, you relax, and enjoy the video. Righto, so we've taken off on the airfield, and might I just say this aircraft is mighty gorgeous. I love the look of the Razorback. It's classic. It's timeless. I, I don't know, it reminds me of some of the early styled aircraft. And I love that about it. It's just unique in a way. Uh, also, something new to the patch, you've got your ammunition and fuel oil uh, instructor and your throttle and things. They've separated some of these spacings up on the top left if you have a look at some of the numbers there. Uh, there's also a few other changes too, you'll notice the, there's bigger dots identifying the targets and ground targets you're supposed to be taking it out. There's a few map changes, as you can see there's different icons on the Wyverns down there. It tells you what kind of vehicle they are by a glance, you just have a look at that particular dot. It's supposed to help you spot things better and hopefully it does work, however I don't really like the change. That's okay, but this thing is just, I don't know. It, it's just a regular P-51. It's something we should have had in the game years ago. And I'm struggling to wonder why it's taken this long to add into the game. Now, I understand trickle-feeding content to, to you know, top-tier vehicles. But there are so many aircraft and so many vehicles that could be added to this game, it is not funny. I'm still waiting on the Sea Vixen, some other fleet air arm aviation stuff waiting on a heap of early prototypey and, and experimental jets that the French came up with, some of the crazy designs. The Super Entard, for example. There's a heap of things. But, again, this is one of the classics that was missing. Now, it is styled in red tails, and I do love the look of this aircraft so much. Uh, there's a P-51 out in Florida, which is dedicated to the Tuskegee Airmen. And uh, War Thunder's actually done one better. They've actually managed to put a... A red tails pilot uh, in the cockpit so that is a fantastic touch the cockpit itself well there's nothing really much to say about it it's copy paste in fact the model is very copy paste itself it does come with three skins that you can unlock uh, but then nothing really much to say about that anyway coming in to dive on our first target we've got a couple of targets to choose from here initially i was going to dive on those wyverns it seems like the whole entire team, aside from that one Spitfire, and possibly, uh, I think there's another Spitfire somewhere around there. Nope, 
I believe the Spitfire, looking back at the team results, uh, the, there was only one Spitfire. The only fighter on the team was technically that Spitfire down there. Everyone else was in Grand Pounders, or <laughs> I guess it's time for, for a new patch, eh? And everyone's unlocking their top tier Jaguar. Hmm. Video soon to come. But we've got a Spitfire, so we may as well use the opportunity to dive in on him. And while this is first impressions on this vehicle, I still, I still model. I just love it. There's something about it. Coming in on a Spitfire, we're going to put a couple of shots his way. Not exactly terribly aimed well. I'm going to pull off. Hopefully he doesn't follow me into a, I guess, a, a path. But anyway, pull an imminent one. Roll over. Use the energy again. And realign on the target. Poor Spitfire didn't know what hit him. Unfortunately for him, spatial awareness was not exactly his strong suit. Neither it is mine, but, you know, I got the better of him in this case. And I survived. Anyway, my terrible aim causes uh, his aircraft to catch on fire, and as a result you spray and pray, and that is the first kill. But my goodness me, this thing is utterly gorgeous. I love the look of this aircraft. I will say it again and again, it is gorgeous. The model they've done is fantastic. I wish they would update the previous models that we talked about earlier in this video, particularly the British one, the, and the two American ones, as well as, you know, your event vehicle, the uh, V51A, which was given away as part of the Thunder League. Did I have a problem with that vehicle coming in, being the only Razorback vehicle at the time? That was a few years ago, I believe that was 2015. Oh, I think that happened. Esports ready, am I right, War Thunder? Anyway, we've got a Wyvern diving in on us. He'll absolutely nail that P61, however, if he's not careful. I should have turned around sooner to try and help him, but there really wasn't much that I could do personally. This is my first match that I had on the aircraft as well. Um, I, I guess it was just interesting. I did take a little bit of damage on the left wing there. But other than that, we're going to roll over, pretend like it didn't necessarily happen. It's around this time when I start to turn around. He's come back, you know, about a minute later. So would I recommend you use this vehicle? Probably not. It's going to be one of those things you just pass through. And I don't know. It would have been useful three, four years ago when I was grinding out other things, but hey, that's, you know, I don't know, what else can you do? Unfortunately, uh, the P-47 there, the friendly, is going to chase by the Wyvern, and he's going to pull directly up. Now, we are going to bait him a little bit. Now, I do apologise, the audio mismatch here. Uh, I didn't actually have audio planned here, but uh, pull him direct up. My aim is just to spray and pray. 700 rounds, hopefully we can knock him out. There we go, pilot snipe. Easy peasy, that's the second kill. And this aircraft flies like a P-40, flies like a regular P-51. It's slow, it overheats. You do need to side climb with the vehicle, but I love it to death. It's gorgeous, it does everything you want it to, it's durable enough. Granted, the ammunition is a little limiting. Uh, 1,200 rounds is not exactly a lot of ammunition, especially when you're fighting a slightly heavier armoured target, so I can see why the US Air Force went for more machine guns and uh, <laughs> progressed to something towards the P-47, which held a hell of a lot of guns. It goes to show, American firepower is all about those 50 counts, hey. But again, I did a video a long time ago on the British Mustang Mark 1A. It was one of the earliest videos that are on the channel, or at least they've been hidden from the channel now, but this thing gives me memories of playing the, you know, lower tiers and, and enjoying, you know, grinding away at a game that was new and fresh. And I suppose it's nostalgia that brings you back, and that's why I'm kind of doing a video on this particular piece. I don't know. I love the look of it. I like the sound of it. It performs pretty alright. But that's not what matters. It's the memories you make along the way and the friends you meet, I suppose. This aircraft brings back memories from when I first started the game, and I suppose that's why I come back to it. It's why I fly lower tiers sometimes, just to get away from the top tier noise. And I guess that's a part of the journey. You know, back in the day, people weren't as drama uh, focused. Uh, people weren't, uh, and necessarily weren't, orientated towards making content. The content was out there, it was fun, it was engaging. I, I suppose that. It was a different world back then, and I kind of miss some of the nostalgia there. I guess that's why we keep coming back to planes and, and vehicles that we, we love. And that, I suppose, is just War Thunder in a nutshell. 
Anyway. Well, that's a roundup of the P51C. There's not much else to say here. <laughs> Aside from uh, good luck with your grinds, and I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. Bye-bye.